right, looks like it's 11.30 now. Uh, my name is J.P. Kramer. Um, I'm an FEF alum from Virginia Tech. Uh, currently, I'm a melting engineer at American Cast Iron Pipe Company, and I'm going to be discussing uh, ductile iron magnesium treatment today. So first, I'm going to briefly cover some background of magnesium treatment um, and its history. So, you know, what is magnesium treatment? Some some ductile iron history, some issues that go with magnesium treatment and um, magnesium recovery, which is an important metric for. So, first, uh, magnesium treatment is the addition of magnesium to iron to produce a microstructure containing graphite spheres or nodules. Um, without magnesium, the iron would solidify with a flake graphite shape, as you can see over on the, uh, the left picture here. That's uh, gray iron, which typically uh, your base material for ductile iron is gray iron. And you'll treat with magnesium to create this sph spheroidal or nodular shape. Um, so, some brief history. Ductile iron was first made by Keith Millis of the International Nickel Company in 1943 um, when he added magnesium to an iron ladle and found the structure contained graphite spheres. Um, the International Nickel Company was later granted a patent for magnesium treatment in 1949, but in 1948, Henton Murrow announced at an AFS conference that he was able to produce ductile iron using cerium additions. Uh, magnesium treatment ultimately became the standard though due to its lower cost and higher effectiveness. Um, there are, despite its advantages, magnesium treatment still uh, has its challenges to overcome. First of all, it uh, boils around 2000 degrees and treatment temperatures are often above 2700 degrees. This causes magnesium to vaporize rapidly and quite violently. Uh, magnesium has fairly limited solubility in iron and it also has a lower density than molten iron causing it to float to the top of the melt and oxidize. Magnesium vapor also combines re uh, readily with sulfur which can lower recovery and create inclusions. And uh, finally, magnesium will fade over time, so the longer treated iron is held before casting, the more you lose magnesium. An important metric for determining uh, treatment efficiency and effectiveness is this mag magnesium recovery. This is essentially measuring how much magnesium actually goes into nodularizing the graphite. I included an example recovery equation taken from the Sorel Metal Book of Ductile Iron that takes into account magnesium that is taken by reacting with sulfur, as well as any residual magnesium that went into solution. Um, re recovery can be affected by uh, many different process parameters and magnesium methods, um, and technology were developed then to optimize recovery and deal with the issues I mentioned on the previous slide. So um, I'm going to go over a few commercially important magnesium treatment um, materials that can be broadly classified into alloy treatment materials and pure magnesium. One of the first treatment materials developed um, that was used by Keith uh, Millis in his initial ductile iron experiment is nickel magnesium alloy or nickel mag. This alloy typically contains about 4 to 16 percent uh, magnesium with varying amounts of silicon, carbon, and iron, and a nickel balance. Uh, nickel mag is high density, so it won't float in iron, giving it a fairly high recovery. And nickel mag is usually used to create high strength prolytic grades of ductile iron, but it can be difficult to produce as cast high ductility ferritic grades. Um, now, magnesium ferrosilicon is the most commonly used treatment material, it usually contains 3 to 10 percent magnesium and often contains calcium, aluminum, and rare earths that all aid in desirable microstructural development. Uh, Magferrous silicon can also uh, provide a significant source of silicon for final iron composition. This alloy has a lower recovery than nickel mag, but is significantly less expensive. Um, and finally, the least expensive treatment material to use is pure magnesium, but it does come with a caveat. 
Uh, pure magnesium has the most violent and difficult to control reaction that requires specialized equipment to effectively use. Um, some more advantages though are it's capable of desulfurization, it minimizes slag buildup that is caused by additives and alloy treatment materials. Uh, pure mag doesn't add silicon, which can be useful for foundries that hit target chemistry before treatment. Um, the lack of additives though often means it needs heavy post inoculation. So I'm going to cover a fairly wide range of treatment methods that can utilize all the treatment materials I mentioned and uh, fit a number of different foundry operations. So uh, the first method I will cover is ladle treatment, which actually encompasses three separate techniques. Um, the first of those is um, the pour over treatment, which is the most simple um, treatment method. It was very popular early on in ductile iron production, and it's just done by simply placing treatment material into the bottom of a ladle and pouring iron on top. Uh, this method uses treatment alloys such as nickel mag and mag ferrosilicon. Uh, magnesium ferrosilicon has a much lower recovery, but again, it is much more inexpensive, and it's suited to for ductile iron production. Uh, the pour-over method is still useful for foundries that only sometimes produce ductile iron, and it wouldn't make sense to invest a significant amount of money into treatment. All ladle treatments have an ideal ladle depth of at least two times the diameter, which allows for more iron depth before reaction, and the iron should be poured as quickly as possible. Sandwich method is successor to the pour over method and adds a cover material on top of the treatment material as well as a ladle pocket that will contain the treatment material. Uh, both of these additions serve to delay the reaction and allow for more iron to be poured which increases recovery. Usually steel punchings are used as a cover material but some foundries use uh, ferrosilicon or ductile scrap or returns. Um, typical, typical recoveries for this are 40 to 50 percent, but this can be affected by air, iron temperature and cover material quality. Um, the final ladle treatment is a ton dish cover, which gained popularity starting in the 80s. This method adds a ton dish or pouring basin to the top of sandwich treatment ladle, which controls pouring rate and stream direction as well as limiting oxygen inside the ladle. So less oxygen in the ladle means lower magnesium loss to oxidation and less treatment fuses, uh, fumes. The co cover also reduces temperature and carbon losses. And this method has the highest typical recovery of the ladle methods but requires more maintenance. Uh, the uh, in-mold treatment is a newer method using alloy treatment material that was developed in the UK in the 70s. It uses a reaction chamber filled with treatment alloy that is integrated into the gating of the mold. And um, mold treatment, it, it's capable of very high recoveries using mag ferrosilicon, uh, but it's required to have a very controlled process. Since this requires tight controls for proper treatment, it's typically used in conjunction with an auto pour system. This method also completely eliminates fade and fumes since it is uh, treated as it is being cast in an enclosed space. Um, this does have some limitations, though, such as casting size, and it reduces the yield. Uh, the plunge treatment is one of the first methods developed to use pure magnesium as well as higher magnesium alloys. It uses a ceramic bell filled with treatment materials that, that is attached to a plunging rod and a lid that will close when the bell is submerged. Uh, this prevents flotation and controls some of the violence. Um, plunge treatment does require specialized equipment and a dedicated treatment area since it uses pure magnesium and the mass of the plunging bell can cause a significant temperature loss. The Fisher converter is another more recent magnesium treatment method developed by uh, George Fisher in 1967. It's a specialized vessel with a chamber that contains treatment material. Iron is poured into the bottom of the vessel to a level that doesn't contact the chamber. The vessel is sealed and then tilted from horizontal to vertical to flood the chamber. Multiple versions of the Fisher converter exist, um, which are variations on how the, the uh, tilter the converter is tilted, so it's quite flexible for a number of foundry operations. Um, this runs best when it's run frequently, um, but it does require frequent maintenance and relining. Uh, the last pure magnesium treatment co um, I'm covering is the pressure ladle treatment. This method uses a specialized treatment ladle that can be sealed and pressurized. Um, and once it's pressurized, a steel plunging rod with an attached pure magnesium block is merged into the iron. Pressure and use of pure magnesium allows for a smaller fraction of the total iron weight to be overtreated, which is then poured back into the remaining iron. Um, this is well suited to high volume operations. Um, 
and uh, this method does require frequent maintenance and doesn't quite desulfurize as well as other pure MAC treatments. And finally, cord wire is a method that was first adopted in the steel industry for deoxidation microalloying. Uh, it has growing acceptance in the foundry industry now uh, to make precise magnesium additions. The cord wire method uses granular treatment material that is enclosed in steel sheathing, which is injected into a ladle using wire feeder. While it doesn't have recoveries as high as some other method, it makes up for that in consistency, potential for automation, ability to customize the treatment material. This uh, method reduces temperature losses, and um, it's possible to inoculate and alloy simultaneously using different uh, wire formulations, but the wire is typically very high cost. Thank you to everyone who uh, attended this session.